Hiya and welcome to day 16 of the 24 day extravaganza and now we're going definitely into something that's paper two we are looking at electric fields so we've got here a figure shows a system used to separate two vines from an ore containing using an electric field so they're mentioning the electric fields so normally when you see this you can go okay look at the electric field section here we've got e equals force over charge and you can have a look at the situation. It's a plate field, so I know I'm also going to be using E equals V over D because this is a uniform field. The cross particle of two different materials gain opposite charges due to friction as they travel down the conveyor belt. And when they leave the hopper, they fall four and a half meters between two parallel plates and are separated by 0.35 meters. Assume that the particle has zero velocity when it leaves the hopper. Calculate the time taken for this particle to fall between the plates. So what's actually happening here is that there is an electric field going here, going this way like this. Okay, so this is the positive side, this is the negative side. And so what's happening is you can see some of them are being attracted to one side or repelled, okay? And but the thing is, is that acting, so the force is acting in the x-axis. The only thing working in the y-axis is this. So what we've ended up with is we've got an, a thing moving and it's being accelerated in a different axis. So we've got a SUVAT situation in a specific uh, uh, projectile situation. So we've got S, U, V, A, and T. We've got one in the X and one in the Y. So we're doing with the R, Y direction. It's going to be falling 4.5 meters. It starts at zero, and that's the same for the X as well. And the accelerations, we don't know what Y is, we do know the acceleration is 9.81. And we want we know because it's projectile motion, it's going to be moving in the y axis as fast as it's uh, as long as it's working in the x axis. So I can use I've got three bits of information. I can actually do the formula. So I've got s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So I know I've got 4.5 equals a half times by 9.81 times by t squared. So I've got 4.5 times 2 divided by 9.81. So 9 divided by 9.81, and then square root that answer, and I get the my time equaling 0 0.96 seconds there, okay? So I know the time in both the x and the y, so 0 0.96 and 0 0.96, so 0 0.96 seconds. Remember, if you've got a line here, always remember to put your answer on it. Just check out the mark scheme here. There we go, one for the method and one for the actual answer of 0.96. A potential difference of 65 kilovolts is put between the two plates. Show that when a particle with a specific 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 is placed, the horizontal is um, acceleration is about 0.2. So this is actually important. When they say the word specific charge, it's kind of like when they see the word density. I tend to write it down. So I know that specific charge is the charge over the mass. Okay, I normally write the formula down because it might, and it will in this case, help me later on. I do the same when I see density, okay? So it's asking for the horizontal acceleration. So horizontal acceleration, of course, you've got F equals MA, okay? And because we're dealing with an electric field, I know that E equals F over Q, which equals V over D. So I can work out the field strength of my object here. So I've got 65 times 10 to the 3 over 0 0.35, because that's the distance between the plates and it's set it up here. So my field strength is 65 times 10 to the 3. Times 10 to the 3 divided by 0 0.3 is oh, quite a big number. So I've got 185. 0.7 times 10 to the 3 newtons per kilo. Okay. And this is interesting here. This is why I put the specific charge. I know that my force is going to be MA because it's going to accelerate me in the excess. So I've got MA over Q equals my field strength. And there we have it. There is this here is my charge in my mass. This here is 1 over the specific charge. So I know that 185.7 times 10 to the 3 equals 1 over the specific charge, which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 times by my acceleration. So what I'm going to do 
do now is we're going to times this here by 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6. And I get an answer of A equaling 0 0.22 metres per second squared. So having a look at the mark scheme here, I've got one mark for working out the field strength, one mark for actually the maths bit, and actually one mark for getting something that was similar or close to 0 0.2. So one mark for that, or one mark for that, and one mark for that. Now, the really cool thing with a show that question is that normally the number that they want you to show is being used in the next question. So it says here, calculate the actual deflection of the plates. So what we have in our situation here is I've got my uh, plates here and it's being launched here and it's going like that there. So I'm trying to find what is my displacement in my X axis here. So I've got my SUVA, S-U-V-A-T. I know this is 0 0.96, so I'm looking for the x-axis. I know it starts at zero, and I know my acceleration is 0 0.22, and I'm trying to work out s. So I'm going to use s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So that's going to be 0 0.5 times by 0 0.2 times by 0 0.96 squared. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.96 squared. I get an answer of 0.09, so 0.09 meters there. So having a check of the mark scheme here, they go 0. They vowed 0.1. Um, I got 0.09. That was using 0.22, um, and a lot of rounding. So they're being quite generous with allowing here. If I go to this, allow from error carried forward with this. So I have done a bit of rounding. All right. So. Explain why a particle takes the time to fall is independent. So this word here, independent, means the mass. I don't care about the mass. Okay. So what you've got to say here is since, okay, the force equals, of course. So why is it independent? Since F equals mg. Okay. Um. F over M equals G, okay? So this here is the acceleration, okay? And since G is constant, no matter the mass falling, the time S equals ut plus a half a t squared. The time is only proportional to a or s. So I'm just saying here, why is it uh, time to find it's independent, so mass is not involved. What I'm saying here is that because the, the gravitational acceleration, f over m, um, since g is constant no matter the mass, because, of course, the force would change, S equals ut plus a half a t squared. The time to fall is only directly proportional to a, the acceleration, which is always constant, and s. Another way you could, of course, do this, another method you could do this, so if I just rub this out here, is looking at the age-old argument of energy. Okay. So you could say that s, okay, equals u plus v over 2 times t, okay? And since the you've got GPE going to kinetic energy, so that's mgh equals a half mv squared, and since the m's cancel, g is proportional to v, okay? So g is proportional to v squared, uh, so therefore, since v uh, g uh, since this has nothing to do with mass here, since v um, t is reliant on v and t is uh, proportional to s and v, um, that's all you need there. So like, you could have gone the kinetic energy route there. So normally, when they say independent, what they're asking is for why, what part of the maths means the mass cancels out, okay? So this one, state and explain two reasons. So state, one mark, 
and explain two reasons why the horizontal accelerated pathway is different for each particle. So, of course, there are two reasons that your acceleration is going to be affected. So you've got E equals F over Q. OK. And of course, that's going to be M A over Q. So the two things that could, of course, change here, your acceleration. So your field strength's the same. The two things that could change is your mass. OK, so, the, so you could have a different mass. OK, which would so um, affect the acceleration by lowering it. Because. F equals M A. So for a higher mass. You have a lower acceleration. Or um, a different charge. OK, so the things that can affect the acceleration is you can have a different charge. A smaller charge, a bigger charge, sorry. Uh, let's go for a bigger charge here. A bigger charge is a bigger force, therefore a larger acceleration. Ah, I can't spell acceleration today. OK, so a different charge, a bigger charge is a bigger force with a bigger acceleration. So I'm stating the two reasons why they might be different. So I'm stating you could have a different mass or you could have a different charge. And I'm explaining what the effect on the horizontal is. So a different match would affect it because it would affect by lowering it because F equals MA, the higher the mass, the lower the acceleration. Or if you had a different charge, which means a bigger charge, which means a bigger force, or therefore a larger acceleration. So if you go to the Mars scheme here, is that they could say that, of course, mass and charge, they're your two states, mentioning why this is happening. So the acceleration here, mentioning that the acceleration, how it would change. But here, for a constant charge with mass of random, so M would likely to row. So I'm actually mentioning the reasons it could be happening here. So I'm saying that acceleration, of course, how it is affected by the mass of the charge and actually being a, li a little bit more specific there, which I've done in each of my answers. So there we have it. That is day 16, a bit more of a second year content looking at um, electrostatic field. Synoptic question because it's looking at first year work there. Hope that helps.